Welcome to the first part of Ansible, the introduction. I know this may not excite many of you, but if you wish to have a strong house, you need to have a strong foundation. And that is the reason why I would advise you to not skip this section. And in this session, we will be learning about the what's and why's of automation, why automation is considered to be a breakthrough in the current technological paradigm, why is Ansible special and what can we do with Ansible. So when we think of automation, there is an instant idea that pops up about how the things that were previously done manually has been turned into a cycle of events or steps to achieve the same outcome, but with less human intervention. And as this is rightly put here, automation is the technique of making an apparatus, a process or a system operate automatically. But before we jump into Ansible, let's meet Jenny and let's understand her side of the story. So this is Jenny. She is an independent consultant and Jenny starts her day with a strong cup of coffee and she likes to have her coffee specially brewed and prepared by herself every morning. So now let's understand how Jenny prepares her perfect cup of coffee. So she starts with, she first measures the amount of coffee beans she needs, then she grinds it to a perfect texture, then she moves on to have the coffee pressed and has her water exactly boiled at 92 degrees and keeps it for filtering. Then she adds a dash of milk and pours it to her favorite cup and then enjoys her perfect cup of coffee with her daily newspaper. And the preparation time for this is around 40 minutes, approximately. And due to the time constraints and work pressure, Jenny wasn't able to prepare her perfect cup of coffee every day. Even though she was feeling the heat, she wasn't willing to give up. And for that, Jenny decided that she will automate the whole process. And let's see how did she do that. She combined the steps the exact measurement and the steps that she did manually and created a small automation machine or an automated machine which would take the list of raw ingredients and would deliver the final product which would give her the taste of the coffee she always had every morning. And now she was able to replicate the same steps in just 6 minutes, saving more than 30 minutes of her precious time. So what did we understand here? So with automation, we are not necessarily reinventing the wheel when Jenny felt the need for automation, she didn't just save time, but she was able to achieve much more than what we might have taken into consideration at first. With automation, she was able to increase the speed at which she was able to process the product. Now she is saving up to 75% of the overall time. She is able to make the process more efficient. She can change the flavors of the coffee on the go. She can change the amount of milk or sugar or how strong the coffee should be and she has much more control over the risk factors that involve. Where if she has a problem with any individual component, she can change it and it will be up and running in no time. And it will deliver the same taste every day. If we can take this analogy of coffee and translate it to IT infrastructure or application deployment, just imagine how much impact it would make to the overall process. But how can we do that? Yes, of course, with Ansible. So what is Ansible? So Ansible is a radically simple IT automation engine that automates cloud provisioning, configuration management, application deployment, intra-service orchestration, and many other IT needs. I realize that these terms may be very intimidating now, but don't worry, we will together cover these topics in detail as and when we move forward. So the most important thing for us is to be clear that, that Ansible is an open source community project sponsored by Red Hat and it's tagged to be the simplest way to automate IT. And you will be glad to know that Ansible is written with Python, PowerShell, Shell, and Ruby. Thanks to Mr. Michael Dehan, who was the one who invented or developed the Ansible tool, which later on went to become Ansible Works and then Ansible Incorporation, and which went on to be acquired by Red Hat in October 2015. We spoke a lot about automation, but we also need to understand why we need to learn Ansible and why Ansible has been the technology of choice for a lot of companies. So let's meet the DevOps team of a company and let's understand their use case. So Sophie, John, David and Kevin work as a part of the DevOps team. They have a task to deploy the application on more than 50 servers and they have to follow a set of protocols to achieve the desired sign off for the product team or the product deployment team. And the steps that they need to perform are, first, they need to stop the monitoring activity or the service. 
they have to disassociate the instance from the load balancer. Again, they have to stop the service, after which they need to deploy the application and check the service status. And if that works, then they have to associate it back to the load balancer. And all of them have to repeat the same steps across all the servers. The team was using shell scripts to achieve this, but they were unable to achieve the level of automation they needed. And that's where Ansible could make a difference. With Ansible, the team didn't have to write the custom code to set up all the deployment activities, and they could easily write or convert each step into working modules called tasks. And using a single playbook, they were able to perform the same deployment activity with much more efficiency. Not only they were able to save time, but they were also able to collaborate on tasks that could be optimized or changed later on by just a single or a simple code commit. And yes, these tasks that we have here are composed in what we call as Ansible playbook and they act as the description of the desired state of your system, which means you can have control of the state of which you want to bring your instances or servers using the playbook. With my personal experience, I would tell you that in a very short time, I am sure you will be able to be very comfortable writing playbooks. It's that easy. All the repeated steps that you use to perform during the deployment process can be achieved by making them a part of the task in the Ansible playbooks. And the best part about Ansible is it's agentless. You don't need to pre-install an Ansible agent on your servers in order to use Ansible because Ansible works with SSH connections to the servers to perform its actions. That's what makes it reliable and secure and equally efficient. And Ansible doesn't stop at application deployment. It also can help us automate our infrastructure, the network configuration, and also it works with container deployments and also helps us with security. And yes, it also works with cloud. With Ansible, you can manage physical devices such as bare metal servers with cobbler stack and Red Hat satellite and network devices such as Cisco, Juniper or Arista and storage devices like NetApp and servers such as HP Enterprise. And for virtualization, Ansible supports all the leading virtualization platforms such as VMware, Red Hat Virtualization or what we call as RHV or Zen servers and Vagrant. And on the operating system side, you will be surely happy to know that Ansible supports all the widely used operating systems such as Linux, RHEL, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, Windows and Windows servers, Unix, OS X, IBM, Nginx and IBM power systems as well. Yes, I totally understand that network automation is very complex when it comes to device configurations because you need to ensure that you have deployed the correct configuration and there will be hundreds of services that could get affected with a single mistake. And that is one of the most challenging things with the network engineers and DevOps engineers as well. With Ansible, you can automate and reduce the complexity of long, detailed and complex method of procedures or what we call as MOPs. And the MOPs are basically the steps that are used as a part of the network deployment. And with Ansible, you can easily test and validate the existing network state and services and have continuous compliance. And Ansible has a very good setup of network automation with, with Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, which provides the capability of Ansible Towers, which provides all these features that can be used to ensure that you have a proper automation footprint. Moving on to the containers, yes, if you are working with Docker and container based application deployment, Ansible works with Docker as well. So let's see the example here where we use Ansible for total application deployment with CI CD in place. So David that we have here commits his code for the new changes he has made to GitHub along with the playbook for Docker, which is being fed as a part of the CI CD to Jenkins post which we have initialized Ansible to push the Docker image to the Docker hub for redundancy and we create the containers using the latest build. So Ansible makes it very easy for us to manage the steps involved in the container deployment as well. So this is one of the very basic ideas of using Ansible when it comes to dockers and containers. So let's come to something that people are really interested in nowadays. Yes, it's Ansible for the cloud. Ansible has its core libraries that provide a base that can help us to easily provision instances, networks and complete cloud infrastructure wherever you need. With Ansible, you can effectively deploy and manage your infrastructure such as managing servers. It helps with cloud native routing and networking, with creating virtual private networks, access policies and permissions, load balancers and auto scaling policies and much more. 
we get support for the most widely used public cloud platforms like AWS, GCP, Azure, VMware, DigitalOcean, and Rackspace. And for private cloud platforms, we have support for we have support for technologies like WebFaction, CloudStack, and OpenStack as well. And as we close down on the question at hand, that is why Ansible? Let's check these points or these four points that it really boils down to. So as we already discussed before, Ansible lets us automate complex repeatable tasks or steps and deploys applications at ease. When you know that you're going to save time with automation, you can share the configuration output with your team members, making it usable by others. And with playbooks, it becomes easy to collaborate with other team members working on the different parts of the task, which can be combined together and executed at once later on. And it's very easy to automate because you don't need to change your existing technology stack that you're using right now. And that's a very big relief, I think, for most of us. So this is the end of the part one. And by now, I believe you got a good understanding of what are the things that can be used or can be achieved with Ansible. And I hope you are excited to join me on this journey with Ansible for 2021. And this is part one. Please let me know by commenting on what you liked, what you didn't, what are the things that you would like me to put in the series or other things that you would like to see in the series. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please press the bell notification icon to get further updates on my videos. And if you wish to support my work, you can do that now by using PayPal, Instamojo and you can become a member on Patreon. The links are in the description below and you can join the channel by clicking on the join button that is right there below as you can see there. So I'll meet you in the next session of Ansible. Until then, it's Pytholic signing off. Bye.